Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Golgothan, and welcome back to another episode of Long Live the Queen. In this episode, we're picking up at week 26, uh, to week 26, I think we're just about to go on the carriage ride, uh, to the party where we're about to be attacked, so let's take a look at our skills. We need our composure to go up. So let's up our composure to make sure that when we do get shot by arrows, we don't freak out. At your command, your teacher strikes your palm with a leather toss, and you, t lear you learn to bear the sting. You lie on a couch and try to remain relaxed while your teacher smacks your heels with a leather toss. My lady, there's a letter for you. Who sent this? It isn't signed. It appears to be a poem describing you in a manner that's entirely inappropriate for a queen. I... What? With a squid? That's hilarious! Pretty funny. Just then, an incredibly unlucky breeze swirls between the windows of your tower bedroom, tugging the paper out of your hands and off into the sky. You stick your head out the window to discover that the poem caught and fluttering... That the poem caught and fluttering on the roof nearby. You discover that the poem... Okay. You can almost reach it. <clears throat> uh, ignore it. What's the worst that could happen? It blows off and someone reads it and laughs at you? That's better than breaking your neck. Besides, if you're lucky, it will rain and wash the words away. Alright, let's take a look at our moods. I want to be willful. I want to be willful. Yes, I want to be willful. But it means being more lonely. God, I need something that makes me pressured. Yielding. It just negates it. It just completely negates it. This and this negate each other. Plus one to press is essentially what those are together. That's lame. Alright, um. I guess 10 court then. We are yielding, which gives us a boost to royal demeanor and history and faith. Ooh. Well, let's do composure two more times, just to be just to be sure we can compose ourselves. Well, let's do composure and meditation. So meditation was another thing that happens in that situation. You're strapped into tight, heavy armor and made to walk around in it, learning that any attempt at sudden movement will catch painfully or trip you up. Slow and steady is the way to go. Your teacher smears your body and clothes with strawberry jam and makes you walk around like that for hours, facing that funny looks and snickers aimed at you without hiding or becoming angry. You close your eyes and relax. Every muscle of your body is in turn, letting... Uh, you close your eyes and relax. Every muscle of your body in turn, letting that feeling travel down through you from your head to your fingertips and toes. You take slow, deep breaths, letting that air move through your body, feeling it give you life and energy. My lady, there are letters for you. Another letter from Briani. Why does she keep writing me? We were never even friends. She says she's bored and lonely and looking forward to seeing me at Gwenel's birthday party. That's right, Gwenel's about to turn 15. She'll be the Duchess of Sudbury for real now. The other letter must be my invitation for to her birthday celebration next week. Gwenel and I were friends at school, and this will be a big event, but it's also a long way to travel. A lot of things can happen on the road. Go to Sudbury. It'll be good to see my friends. Too angry. Wants to be angry though. Depressed. Bam, a 10 court. Alright, still yielding. Skills. So we'll be okay. We okay on the trip. I think. So, now what do I want to do? Hmm. I'm trying to remember what happens after the wagon attack. I believe I'm going to need... Uh, Novan History and Foreign Affairs.
Okay. I'm gonna do Novan history and world history. Go. Novan his Nova's history involves an endless slew of names and dates, even as small as it as it's become. There are ten dukedoms. No, eleven now, plus the royal line. You hope no one expects you to memorize every lineage. No individual may hold more than one dukedom, but nobles seek noble spouses, so titles often come together before being parceled out to heirs. Your father is Duke of Calaris, and his brother is Duke of Mozamba. Bryn, Duchess of Hellas, is the sister of ben Banian, Duke of Marie, and so on. You read about the western continent, Javar, where civilization flourished so long ago that the ancestral Novans were still living in caves. No one knows what became of them. The population vanished without a trace, leaving only their enormous stone buildings. In the distant past, the Yeven and the Yeveni tribes to the east road great in the distant past, the Aveni tribes to the east rode giant beasts with spines and tentacles on their heads instead of horses. The bones of these creatures are sometimes found in li Lilia and Mead, and their tusks are valuable to crafters. And locked in new outfit. Huzzah! Historian? On your journey to Sudbury, your carriage is attacked by bandits! Yikers! You're struck with an arrow and is buried itself in your side. Outside you can hear screams and curses, but it feels unreal. Your world is centered around pain. You know that pushing the arrow through will only make matters worse, so you have to bear the pain and wait patiently until someone can help you. Calling on your mental discipline, you remain calm and keep a steady pressure on the wound. Your escort chases off the bandits, an experienced surgeon cuts out the arrowhead and bandages your wound. It's actually not as bad as it looked, but it still hurts. The rest of your trip goes smoothly. Huzzah! Gwendol's party is lovely, not nearly as glamorous as your own. Uh, as your own upcoming birthday will be, of course, but it's still a major event on the no noble social calendar. Everyone who is anyone is present. Uncle Laurent and your young cousins are here, but Charlotte and her mother are not. Apparently, Charlotte was ill. Arise, uh, Arisi, Arisi, the Duchess of Leah is present, but somehow she always manages to avoid talking to you when you draw near her. There are refreshments and dancers and musicians and polite conversation, and one or two not so polite will not be shoved aside. Mother, this is my domain now. I need space for myself. You have your own lands to manage. Just because you're the of age doesn't mean you know everything, young lady. You need my advice. This is my home. It has never been yours. Before you can back away, their gaze falls upon you. They wait expectantly for the near queen to settle the dispute. Bakers. I will side with... Gwenel. You heard her. She's an adult now, and she's in charge here. Thank you. This is what your father will face upon your coronation. Cast aside without another word. He's not He's not going to like hearing that, is he? A bit later, Brianna catches up with you. Oh, no. Hey, Elodie. It's Hey, Elodie. It's so wonderful that you're going to be queen now. I mean, I'm sorry about your mother. Thanks. But think of all the opportunities you're going to have. You're so lucky. That's an odd way of putting it. Anyway, I was wondering if, now that you're almost queen and everything, have they told you all the secrets? What secrets? Like, how to get into the old palace. I've heard it's packed full of, full of, oh, packed full of treasure. Old palace? Dang it. I don't know, it was almost there. The one on Catherine Lake, where the kings and queens of Nova used to live. I don't know anything about that. Oh. She bites her lip and frowns at you. Well, never mind then. She walks away, so much for wanting to talk. At the end, you all share a pleasant meal and prepare to return to your various lands. Hmm. Where should we, what should we do next? Dang it, I worked so hard to get my angry up. Um. Cheerful and lonely will make me still yielding any willful. I am afraid. Uh, which gives me a boost to agility and faith. Where's agility? Oh, here it is. Dance, flexibility, and reflexes. Hmm. Um, faith. Divination. Do divination. I never do divination, so let's do it. Go. 
You learn that the gods cannot be forced to divulge information about the future, and that the most powerful omens are those which arrive unexpectedly. Dropping your favorite plate is bad luck. A statue spontaneously shattering is a bad omen. You read that well-known signs of bad fortunes, wells turning sour, dry lightning, strange fish caught in nets, malformed babies being born, and so on. The Duchess of Leah has sent you a gift. What is this? It's a cushion finely embroidered with the design of a running horse. It's well done and clearly requires hours and hours of needlework, but it's also fairly useless. It's nice, I guess. Find a chair or sofa to set it on. Alright. Um, I like being afraid, so let's do afraid and lonely. No, I don't want afraid and lonely. Afraid and depressed? Afraid and depressed will work. Pay your respects to your mother's tomb. Wonder if the same fate is waiting for you. All right, let's take a look at the skills now. It should still be faith, so let's do lore. Lore, lore. Um, let's change our outfit to. Hmm. Scholar's gown. Know more about history. What does that make our skills look like? Gives us forties. Go. Only a lumen can channel magic, and only with the help of an, un an attuned crystal. The ability to control a crystal seems to be inherited, so crystals can be passed from parent to child upon the lumen's death. The kings and queens of Nora have all become lumens for centuries, but in modern times, magic is only used for ceremonial occasions and the direst of emergencies. Long, long ago, the continent of Borealis has rule, was ruled over by a single witch king until a rival line of lumens changed, challenged for the crown. The resulting war went on for a hundred years with the powerful spells that damaged the land so badly that even now, the plants will, no plants will grow. New outfit, huzzah! The Duchess of Mead is here to see you, my lady. Hello, Elodie. I'm sorry to trouble you, but have you seen Briani? Not since the party last week. She shakes her head. She's gone missing. She's not at school where she should be. I know she was unhappy, but I never expected. She was asking questions at the party about the old Novan Palace, and then she wandered off. Sorry, I don't really know. The, oh no, Briani, what have you done? She hurries out of the room without even bothering to say farewell. All right, so we are afraid. I'm okay with that. Willful and lonely. Huzzah. All right, let's take a look at our skills. So let's, let's see our new outfit. Divination. Lose faith, here we go, bam robes okay so let's take divination and lore go legend has it that long ago a horde of yaveni on the back of tentacled monsters rode into the valley of mead laying waste to all in their path their conquest was only halted when a lumen raised a great flood to drown the invaders legend says the island domain of Mal M malini was once a single island instead of a cluster, until an invading Novan queen raised an, a terrible pillar of fire that shattered the land into pieces. You read about signs that have presa presaged, presaged famous disasters, such as the seas running red before the doom shadow fell upon Nova 200 years ago. You read about King Latimer and how he was—he knew he was destined for greatness when he saw the shape of a crown in a spider web. As you are walking through the great hall, a freak gust of wind suddenly blows out all the candles in the room. An omen of war and danger. There's no sign of where the danger might be coming from, so there's nothing you can do about it. Perhaps it's nothing. Um. 
this one afraid will still make me okay. Let's do it. Alright, so let's take... start taking something else now. Should take more. Ah, it's got a damper to military. Um, do some conversation. Some court manners. Do court manners and meditation. my conversation uniform. You stare into a polished crystal ball and relax, letting your mind wander. You close your eyes and visualize a crystal ball floating in front of your eyes. You study rules for formal dining, including the proper utensils for different dishes. As the queen, no one will comment on your mistakes, but they will notice them. You study the traditions of ballroom etiquette and how to politely accept or defer an offer, and how to avoid the impression of attachment to an individual. Things have been so unsettled lately. Everyone's on edge. We need something cheerful. You could hold a tournament. That's a good idea. Knights, jousting, musicians, all sorts of competitions. Everyone loves a contest. Or you offer as prizes to the winners. Uh, status and praise. Being declared to be the best is in front of an entire domain should be prize enough for anyone. Very well. I will draft the announcements. You leave him to his work. As you move through the hall, your eye falls upon a vase of flowers, pretty but apparently not getting enough water. The leaves on one blossom have shriveled. Someone in hall duty is being lazy. These flowers should be replaced. I can't believe I failed divination on that one. You continue up the stairs to your room where a maid is waiting for you. My lady, a gift has arrived from Kijil. From the Duke? No, my lady. A merchant house, I believe. It was sent with a shipment down river, down the Kavala River. You tear open the brightly colored paper to find... Chocolates! And a little card with the box. With our compliments, the house of Kray... Kraylot. All of a sudden, your puppy, who was so well behaved, growls at the box of chocolates and lunges at it. Bad dog. Chocolate isn't good for you. Silly thing making such a fuss. Save it for later. I don't feel like candy right now. Maybe later. All right. I wish I had pressured and cheerful. Um, willful and lonely. All right, so we're still afraid. So I'm gonna do more divination. Divination and faith. Meditation. Go. You read about animal omens, in particular the flights of birds. You learn about signs which sometimes appear in grounds or leaves at the bottom of a cup. You learn, you close your eyes and visualize a crystal ball floating through the air, moving past your eyes and into your mind, filling you with light. You learn to visualize the space around you so that you can see the whole room with your eyes closed. As in the week, this is the week of the general tournament. Nobles and commoners alike have turned out to compete against each other. The people will be pleased if you participate in their games. However, it would expose you to danger. What event would you partake in? All right, folks, here I had some narration issues, of course. Um, I don't know what is going on with my Audacity and or my Fraps, but I'm going to consider using different software to record. Um, so as you can see, we tried to take part in the Falconry Challenge. Let's see what happens. Uh, failed. Only one such is to master of your muse to, who... Uh, anyway, our master finds us Finds out we're trying to go down there with the bird and stops us. Looks like you won't be taking part in this after all. All the winners are announced and displayed to great cheers. As near queen, you place flower garlands around their necks. See, like the sound in-game sound cut out. All of a sudden, a man approaches. It's Kevin, Earl of Lowe, Eo. He hands you an armored gauntlet and then the other a sword. 
My family's blood is on your hands. What is he talking about? He casts the metal glove to the ground with a clatter and raises his sword pointed at you. I challenge you, Elodie. A life for a life. He challenging you to a duel? Uh, no thanks. Refuse. I'm not going to fight you just because you want me to. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like he's interested in your refusal and charges at you anyway. Oh no! Before you can react, a streak of dark feathers races down from above, screaming for blood. I'm not quite sure how it happened, but somehow your falcon has come to your rescue. Faced with a sharp beak and claws trying to claw his eyes, Kevin is forced to drop his sword and use his hands to protect himself. At that point, the guards move in to arrest him. You and your, guard, your bird are both safe. After the tournament, a minor tragedy is revealed. One of the stewards apparently had an incredible sweet tooth and dared to steal a piece of your recently received chocolates. He had a sweet tooth. The chocolates were poisoned. When you ask questions, it turns out that the merchant house which supposedly sent you the present never existed. Jerks. Someone has tried to kill you, but you don't know who. Alright, what, what class are we going to take? Um, do, do minus one afraid, perhaps? Um, what about... Um, if I go hunting, it's minus two afraid. Mm. Yeah, let's go hunting. Do it. You're affected by fear. Oh no! But that's fine. Fear is minus one. Minus two, I mean. Awesome. Alright. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please click like down below. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see other videos like it. You can follow me on Twitter at Golgothan, or you can like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Golgothan. I am Golgothan. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.